And every token, sort of in the in the understanding space of this language, in this vision transformer, um, has a location. It knows where the ear of this cat is. Um, it knows that this token is is in the middle at the top and slightly to the right. Now, here is how language transformers work. They split a sentence into tokens in a similar way. <clears throat> except these are just displayed on one axis. So you could be writing a paragraph, you could be looking at a spreadsheet, you could be, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and this would still be represented in the space of a transformer, or at least the input of a transformer, is one line of text. Now, if we want transformers to use, for example, um, for example, the web, the web is a 2D experience. So we would like, there are, you see, we have columns, we have, we have buttons that are right next to each other. We have things that are above each other. Um, so this is what Llama 2D does, or at least what it would do. Um, Llama 2D sees the web in terms of image tokens, but these image tokens have a place. They're placed somewhere on some imaginary grid, just like a vision transformer sees things. This is the same one in a grid. Yes, so here is Google, and here is Llama 2D's vision of Google. And here's our actual rendering of the actual website. Yes. Um, here is an example. So we run OCR on web pages, uh, and then we feed these into Llama 2D. Um, now, the model is all well and good, but we never even made our data set, um, or we never got the data set to work. So this is uh, an idea and a model that hasn't been trained yet. However, uh, let's keep talking about sort of the model and the idea of what we're trying to do. So one of the things that we really try to do is, if we have this model that sort of understands the semantic meaning um, of vision, like semantic meaning of structure, which is like a funny term to say, what we ideally want is to, for it to act as like an agent, as an agent that interacts with the web page. So you see something like this, and you want to be able to like click on buttons and type things somewhere, right? Type things somewhere. And the real qu next question is, how in the world is the model going to tell us what it wants to click on and what it wants to type? Fortunately, we actually figure out a way of encoding this as linguistic information by taking, uh, you saw the Google homepage, a rendering of Google and adding anchor text. So this is actually happening live, um, if you can see. So, <laughs> so we can try that again. So it's blinking, so keep looking at what changes on that web page. Uh, ignore the thing. Yep, there we go. Basically, each of the clickable elements gets a tag assigned to it, and the labels for the LLM, which is uh, essentially will output like two words. It will output like action, click, and then the tag number. Um, this has been shown to work. This tag is seen for on GPT four without any tuning. So we're uh, we're confident that with tuning, this will work on smaller models as well. Be sure there are predictions. Yes. Take some HTML, render it, render it, tag it, uh, screenshot it turn that into special tokens with location information, feed that into Llama, and then uh, ask Llama which tag it should interact with. Ta-da! Thank you very much. Yeah. Is this something you guys think you're going to... Like continue working on? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So this is actually like somewhat adjacent to like the the work that my startup does. So like this uh, the the real estate website, for example, that that's like really it's this isn't one of our customers, but it's like generally in that space. Um, and we're really interested in improving this kind of uh, ability to do these web interaction tasks. This website has given me nightmares. Uh, the, the the issues with the HTML encodings. Are just endless. Like for example, you see you see this like uh, placeholder text in this input over here. It's actually not a placeholder. It's set dynamically by another element, not the search box, by another element that's somewhere else in the documentary. Yeah. So that means that when you go and you you look at this actual element for the search box, you don't actually know what it is. Um, so that prevents the, the the language model from understanding. Uh, where to to input its its search queries. Um, so by doing OCR. Yeah. No, I'm saying, finish. Yeah, so by, by doing OCR, uh, we can understand the, the positional structure of this web page. Um, and uh, like, like you can see this, like the, the one tag over here, we can have the language model say, oh, oh, this is very clearly a search bar um, based off of the placeholder. Let's uh, click this tag one, 
um, and output some text over there. And on a theme of it working for people's jobs, I've been building a search tool uh, with LLMs right now just looking text and doing the same anchoring scheme, but um, after each sentence. And essentially asking the LLM to do a few short QA, extracting question answering where it goes, this is, these are the relevant passages. So going one step beyond RAG, where it can actually give you sentence level citations. Uh, this would allow you to do that on websites and other things where it gives you a value box on the things that you're searching for. But yes, but all of us have vested interest in continuing this work. Yes. Maybe eventually published as a paper in like open source. Yeah, that's the hope. Thank you. Thank you very much.